stunning. Absolutely stunning. Spirited Away is a 2001 Japanese animated film, animated by the legendary Studio Ghibli. Which, yeah, I know there's a bit of a debate over whether it's Ghibli or Ghibli. I've personally always pronounced it as Ghibli, but from my research online, it seems Ghibli comes from an Italian word that actually uses a soft G, and the Japanese themselves also pronounce it with a soft G. So I guess technically, it is Ghibli. But to be honest, I think most people are fine with either pronunciation. It's not like the word GIF, where some people pronounce it as GIF. My name is Jeff. You know, despite the G standing for graphics, which is a hard G. Or Nutella, where some people wrongly pronounce it as Nutella, even though it's clearly meant to be pronounced as... Wait, what the fu- Spirited Away was directed by Hayao Miyazaki. <laughs> Hayao! <laughs> who has also directed many other of the well-known Studio Ghibli films, such as Howl's Moving Castle, Ponyo, and My Neighbor Totoro. Spirited Away though, perhaps not being the most well-known Ghibli film, certainly is the most notable, as it's not only the highest grossing film in Japanese history, with over $361 million worldwide, even surpassing Titanic, yeah, suck it Titanic. But it is also at the moment, the only hand-drawn, non-English speaking film to win the Academy Awards for Best Animated Feature. Now this may not be my proudest fact, but until this review, I had not actually seen Spirited Away before. <gasps> and had only heard about it from the many, many other people who have recommended it to me. So I'm going into this with a really fresh mindset. Will the film live up to the expectations that others have set? Or is it going to be a case of people with overhyped nostalgia goggles overrating its quality? For the love of God, please don't be the latter. Now, this is the usual part of the review where I will go into the film's plot. But for this one, I'm going to do something a bit different. Where I won't go into too many plot details, but just give you the basic story instead. And I'll explain my reasoning for that in a bit. So, here's the basic plot. We follow a young girl named Shahiro as she, her mum, and her dad are travelling towards their new home. During the journey, her father decides to take a shortcut, which leads them to a seemingly abandoned amusement park. The parents are keen to look around, but Shahiro, on the other hand, is a little more hesitant, as she gets an uneasy vibe from the whole place and suggests that they leave. They discover an unmanned market stand, which has an array of freshly cooked food. Captivated by the smell, Shihiro's parents are quick to dig in, while Shihiro continues to look around. When she returns back though, she finds that her parents have been turned into pigs, and now that the night is beginning to fall, sees all these mysterious ghost-like figures appearing around the park. As she tries to escape, she notices that the once grassy field has been replaced with an ocean. She meets a mysterious boy named Haku, who tells her that she will need to lay low and get a job at the local bathhouse whilst they figure out a way to save her parents. Don't be afraid. I just want to help you. Open your mouth and eat this. Chew it and swallow. Yeah, probably not the best message for kids right there. From there on, we meet an abundance of whimsical characters, including a spider-like man who kind of reminds me of Dr. Robotnik, a cloaked creature wearing a mask who swallows people whole, adorable little soot creatures, and a bitch of a witch who runs the bathhouse. Now, the reason I don't want to go too much into the plot is not because of spoilers, but more so because that's not where the film's strength lies. The plot in itself is fine, but to be honest, it's not really the story that's going to keep you captivated. It's more so the visuals you see as the story is being told. Spirited Away was not actually made with a script, as explained in an interview from the director, Miyasaki. I don't have the story finished and ready when we start work on a film. I usually don't have the time. So the story develops when I start drawing storyboards. It's not me who makes the film, 
The film makes itself, and I have no choice but to follow. And you definitely feel this when watching, because the highlight of the film without doubt is the artistic look and animation. The animation for this film is beautiful, full of highly detailed, lush drawings which really help showcase the wondrous fantasy going on in this world. I've always said that the greatest strength of animation is having no limits on the design and movements you can bring to the characters on screen, and this film certainly makes the most of that strength. There are also moments scattered through where additional frames are used to create a much smoother motion, but while still maintaining that high level of detail. And yeah, the detail is amazing in this film. Prime example is looking at the character Yubaba. Just look at the level of detail on her face with how the lighting and shading perfectly defines each wrinkle on her skin, giving her a really in-depth 3D look. And as well as the realistic detail, the movement is also impressive. Despite a lot of mythical creatures, there's actually a lot of realistic movement in here. Similar to the Disney films where the animators would study the movement of real life animals to better animate them on screen, this film would do the same. The scene where Shihiro needs to force feed Haku the medicine, the animators would study a dog's mouth in real life as a vet would feed it treats whilst holding its lower jaw. Now let's move on to the music. Holy crap, the music is right up there with the animation. Composed by Joe Hisashi, forgive me if I pronounce that wrong, the main theme features a beautiful piano piece, which truly captivates the beauty and wonder that we see before us, offering a balance of soothing, wholesome, yet emotional energy. This soundtrack is so elegant and peaceful, that I actually found myself seeking out the piano score and having it play in the background whilst writing this review. It's certainly one of those songs where you only have to hear the first few seconds of the opening melody to instantly associate it with this film. Another thing this film handles really well is the pacing. Because the amazing thing about this film is that it has a runtime of over two hours. Most animated films will tend to stick to an average runtime of about an hour and a half. Which makes sense, mostly due to their target audience being younger and having less of an attention span, cause, you know, kids gotta be kept entertained. <laughs> and secondly, because animation itself is a long and expensive process, so no point padding out your film with pointless filler. But Spirited Away really didn't feel long at all, and I was wondering as to why that was. Could it be just down to the distracting visuals and music? Well, partly. But I believe the main reason is down to how it's paced. The film has a pattern throughout where we'll have small intervals of action sandwiched between take a breather moments. You can see this immediately in the opening scene where we start nice and peaceful as Shahira and her family are seen driving towards their new home, followed by an intense moment of action as the dad speeds along a shortcut in an aggressive manner, nearly crashing the car, but then back to quiet as they begin to check out the abandoned amusement park. This method of pacing ensures that the audience is kept on their toes, but not overloaded with emotion or information that they would become exhausted by it. My favourite use of this pacing is towards the third act, where we get an intense chase scene of No Face and Chihiro, but then the film just comes to a complete stop, as we get this beautiful moment where Chihiro and No Face are riding the train together, and we simply stop and look at the world around them, as the train travels across the land, or um, sea, allowing the audience themselves to become immersed in the world it's trying to present. Now I know I said this film didn't really have a massive plot element going on, but it certainly did have some strong themes to it. The most notable is the nature of greed, such as how the parents get turned into pigs, how No Face consumes those that are greedy for gold, or even how No Face himself turns into a monster after consuming too much food in the bathhouse. And there is intentional reasoning to this theme of greed in the film, as an interview from the director Miyazaki stated, Shihiro's parents turning into pigs 
symbolizes how some humans become greedy. At the very moment Chihiro says there is something odd about this town, her parents turn into pigs. There were people that turned into pigs during Japan's bubble economy of the 1980s, and these people still haven't realized they've become pigs. This also seems to somewhat tie into another important theme of the film, and that's identity. Such as Shihiro now losing her name to be known as Sen, Haku not being able to return to the real world as he has forgotten his real name, Yubaba not recognizing her child after he's been transformed, and Shihiro needing to identify her parents in order to save them. There's also a little hint as well of superstitious elements, such as the parents stating that spirits are said to live in the little stone houses, and performing a simple ritual to unbind yourself from bad luck. Put your thumbs and forefingers together, huh? Evil, be gone! Finally, let's take a look at the characters. I love the characters in this film, mainly because there is no definitive hero or villain. Most of the characters Shihiro meets will start off cold and hostile towards her, but will grow softer as she proves herself as a hard worker, showing that respect isn't just granted, but needs to be earned. Hey, son. Haven't you ever worked a day in your life? Even the seemingly villainous Yubaba shows compassion towards her at the end, making you wonder if she actually was evil, or just someone who likes to run a tight ship with the bathroom house. Then on the contrast you get a character like Haku, who starts off warm and friendly, but as the film goes on, you hear how the other characters question his motives, and it leaves you with doubt as to what his true intentions may be. He's Yubaba's henchman, don't trust anything he says. <laughs> and then of course there's Shihiro herself, whom I'm gonna leave best described in the words of Miyasaki. I created a heroine who is an ordinary girl, someone with whom the audience can sympathize. It's not a story in which the characters grow up, but a story in which they draw on something already inside them, brought out by the particular circumstances. I want my young friends to live like that, and I think they, too, have such a wish. In conclusion, this is a fantastic film, and an absolute must watch if you haven't seen it already. Stunning visuals, beautiful music, and great pacing. Which, unlike Shihiro, will leave you wanting to stay in this magical world for a lot, lot longer. In this film, there certainly was an incredible level of talent and skill which went into the animation. It sure would be nice to be able to learn some of these skills in order to be able to animate like that for ourselves, but without having to pay the thousands of pounds for university debt. Boy, if there was only some sort of website where people could share skills in order to help teach each other how to animate. Oh, Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 7 million creators involved and over 25,000 classes. Premium memberships give you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. For example, there is an animation community which offers you tutorials on how to create all sorts of animations from traditional to digital to stop motion to 3D to pixel to paper cuts. You get it. Within these communities, you meet like-minded learners give and receive feedback on projects, and speak with others who have the same interests as you. Skillshare has given away a free 2 month unlimited access trial to my subscribers who click the link in the description box, or you can simply go to skill.shit slash, you know what, just click the link. And after that, it's just $10 a month. Thank you so much for watching guys, and until the next one, take care.